you're watching this, you're probably on the fence on whether this software is worth it. And by the end of this video, you should have an understanding if this will suit your needs for your day trading analysis. Now, who is this for? Well, think of it as if you were a contractor in any field, whether a plumber, electrician, a roofer, who needed specialized tools in order to complete specialized jobs. This is not for everyone, but for only for those who are serious futures traders who are trying to exploit the market with a more refined edge that will provide you with the ability to peek behind the veal of each candlestick you are trading. This tool will allow you to have access into the centralized ledger that is available in the futures market. Regardless if you trade the NASDAQ, SPX futures, Russell, Dow, oil, gold, you name it. What you should expect from this software is for it to provide you with tools such as footprint charts, the depth of market, auction vista, and more, which will help you spot things in the market such as absorption, iceberg orders, trap participants that you won't get from most commonly used platforms for day trading such as TradingView, Thinkorswim, Webull, Robinhood, and any others. What are these tools, right? Well, I'm going to briefly cover each tool that is offered and how I use them in my trading along with the settings that I use to collect data in the market and initiate my trades. There's going to be a variety of features, so make sure you stay tuned. One of the first features you're, we're going to cover is going to be what's called Auction Vista. This is going to provide you with insight on the resting limit orders that are on the offer or the sell side, hence the red orders here that are shown up on the screen. The brighter the color on the sell side, the bigger the resting orders. The lighter the color, the less significant or smaller amount of resting orders available at the sell side. And then the opposite will be true for the bids or the buy side. Thicker the color, the more buy resting limit orders will be available. So white will include a heavy order sitting at the market waiting to be filled. And the lighter colors in between are going to be lower sides of liquidity. And they're constantly changing. So as the market's moving, these levels are creating new and new colors as the market trades um, in any direction. The next thing you'll have will be the balance circles. These colors are very similar to what you would see in what's called um, another order flow tool called Bookmap. Those will show trades that were filled with higher than normal volume, which will pop up with more sell as red or blue with bigger size, depending on which size was bigger on that bubble. So as an example here, you will see there was a blue bubble that caused, uh, popped up here along with a few others. This initiated the upside movement and they continue to bid as price went higher. At which point the sell side swallowed up all the liquidity, hence the red uh, indicator above. You'll see that in balanced form. As you can see on the lower end, you got a smaller bubble, hence a smaller amount of orders. Although it's still an imbalance, the sell side outweighed the buying as price drifted lower. I personally do not use this indicator, but can be useful for scalping the market or finding trapped imbalances at key levels using those balance circles. Now we have the footprint chart. Personally, one of my favorites in combination with the depth of market, which I'll be covering next, which helps me gauge reversals and who the aggressors are at key areas. This footprint chart is essentially a candlestick chart, which gives you the ability to modify to any time frame. In this example, you have a five minute example. So this is a five minute candlestick essentially that opened on the low end and had a close right about there. The key difference is you can see where the majority of the volume occurred within the candle, along with what was the context of the way the candle formed. As an example would be, was the formation of that candle mostly stops getting triggered on the way up or down? Was there actual participation with aggression when that candle formed, heading into highs or lows? The settings I use will help you identify and better gauge what kind of participation is taking place within the development of that candle. Now there is one disclaimer. There are, my settings are for the ES in specific, as this is a thicker market. So this, the settings I have might not serve you if you trade a thinner market such as the NQ or the Russell, etc. Now before we jump into getting into the settings, we first must show you how we open a footprint chart. Uh, you're going to want to load up your workspace on Jigsaw Day Trader. Click on this icon here, it's a chart icon. You're going to click your connection, I'm going to use my personal account for the connection data feed, and load up the ticker that you trade. I'm going to use the most current month for the futures trading contract that I'm going to be trading. And you click OK. You should have a chart load up and the default settings will be a, a normal uh, candlestick print, uh, chart. What you want to do is click on JT Footprint, and here is where I'll start to modify the settings. But first and foremost, I'm going to open up 
the default settings so you can see how it looks when you first open it. One of the few things I do toggle off, which is tilt mode, but let's get this opened up a little bigger so we can see what it looks like. This is what it will look like with tilt mode, and it doesn't look very clean. I don't really prefer these settings, so I'm going to go ahead and modify so you can see exactly what I have open when I open up any of these uh, candle or footprint charts. The first thing I modify, which you want to take note of, is the five minute print. I have my five minute intervals. You can modify this to whichever you please. But the first thing I toggle off is the tilt mode. Remove that off. You'll see that it looks a lot cleaner just simply using that alone. Next thing I modify will be the imbalances in volume. So in the minimum imbalance volume, I keep at 150. I change this volume to 150, so 150. What that means is that the minimum imbalance order to show up yellow, now that we've modified tilt mode off, what I like to do the next setting I change is going to be the imbalance volume. I change this from 100 to 150. The standard is 100, so make sure you change that on your chart. And the next um, setting I changed is the imbalance percentage, and I change that over to mine 300. Click apply. You're going to see that some of the yellow numbers that were used to be highlighted have now been removed. And the reason I do this, and I'm going to open up the other chart, is simply because I don't like to see that many imbalances spread throughout the chart. It's too much noise. It doesn't give me a clean view as to where the aggressors are from the ask or the bid side, the offer or the bid or the buy side. So I prefer to keep the imbalances to a minimum so I can get a cleaner view as where potentially the true aggression is taking place, hence these highlighted numbers showing up. Okay? If I had the settings differently, then you would see a bunch of them showing up in all over these candles, and it's just too much noise. Now the final setting, in order to have the information I have down at the below of this footprint chart, such as the cumulative delta, delta, and total volume, you will need to set up the same way you modified the chart, but instead you'll go to the indicators tab, once you go to the indicators, you'll click on JT Footprint Stats, click Add. I already have mine added, so essentially, once you have it added, you can then modify the information. I simply untoggle these two boxes. These are not necessary and save you screen space. The reason is the delta is essentially the difference between the buy and sell volume and the cumulative delta, the aggression of buying and selling over the course of the session. Okay, so the cumulative delta is blue. You have more aggressive buying throughout the session. The cumulative delta is red. And you have more aggressive selling throughout the session. And the delta would be the same. You subtract the buying minus the selling. Gives you a red or blue number. Hence, the middle column at the bottom of the chart. Now, the depth of market allows you to see each and every order get filled in a per tick basis. So in the center column, you have the... ES column or the ES DOM and to the right you have the NQ DOM. With this tool you'll be able to see things like absorption, iceberg orders, along with the ability to see and feel the flow of the market as we hit swing highs or lows. This is a very cool tool in conjunction with the footprint and has given me the opportunity to get amazing fills on entries and spot bottoms or tops alone based on the pace of the orders. I'm going to provide you the settings that I utilize for the ES DOM and the NQ DOM. There are carry key differences that I have between one another, so I'll go ahead and cover those because they each trade in different terms of volume. The ES is naturally a thicker market and the NQ is thinner, hence having different settings in order to spot those imbalances and get a cleaner view of the flow that you might see in the DOM. Now before I jump into the DOM, you're going to see from a real try live trading example how I short the ES because of the pace of the DOM on the opposing side, which is the e &Q DOM. I'm going to fast forward this a little bit, but you're going to see how I'm using the divergence in the, two, the pace of the two DOMs to capture a nice short near the high of day during the morning session of the ES. So I'm going to power that through real quickly, and you're going to see this DOM, how I'm circling it, kind of guiding you, walking you through this weakness that I'm seeing at the high of day as the NQ tries to push higher and higher and price starts to retrace shortly thereafter.
and the market is currently closed at the time of this recording, hence the DOM is being blank. But normally you'll see orders get filled and everything you saw during the live that I just showed you guys from one of my YouTube videos. So if you guys want to join me, it's free. I walk you through you guys how I use these order flow tools day in and day out. But nonetheless, I'm going to jump into the settings here and show you what I have for my modifications for the ES DOM and NQ DOM separately. Now, very similar to earlier, you're going to need to open the workspace uh, toggle and you're going to go to the hammer, which is the depth and sales or DOM. You're going to open up and you're going to use whichever data feed you wish to use. Again, I'm using my personal account here. You click in whichever ticker you trade. In this example, this is for the ES futures. You do have the option as well to toggle the uh, cross instrument so you can trade the micro ES while getting data from the ES features so this is what I utilize so I will click that as I trade the micro ME, uh, ES contracts while using the ES information on the DOM displayed so once that opens up I'm going to modify the settings what you'll do is you'll click the wrench similar to what we did with the chart and the settings that I like to eliminate are going to be as follows you can have the bid and ask profile the alert column removed. You will have the ask and the bid snapshot column removed, along with the LTQ column. Okay. And the final thing that I modify is also the auto center on ticks. I smooth that over to five. I want to make sure it's centering by itself without me having to modify it. it. Gives me more time to look at the flow of orders. Once you have that set up, you'll be ready to view your DOM for the ES with my similar settings. So just drag it down and make sure it fits the whole screen. All right, and then for the NQ DOM, because the NQ is so volatile and thinly traded, I have refined what I have up in my DOM to better suit the needs that I need to gauge the NQ's behavior. So with that being said, we open up the same settings. Again, pick whichever data client you have. I will show at the end of this video how to connect your data feed, so stay tuned for that as well. We're going to do the NQ here. My apologies. NQ, I trade the micros. So there we go. Oh, I missed one important setting. Let me backtrack there. The tick multiplier. This is very key. Another thing that I do have, and this is for the reason that I modified, I'll go into it in a bit, but make sure your tick multiplier is set to four. What that does is it modifies the number of values you see on the DOM. So as an example for the ES, you're going to get those quarter values shown. So you get a 101 or 49 in a quarter, 50 cents, 75 cents, a full dollar. Because the NQ is so thinly traded and it's so volatile, I compress it to make it look cleaner so I get a better view of the overall flow of the NQ. So I set my compression to four, which will then, if you can see comparatively side by side, will have no tick values on this. You won't have a full round dollar valuations as opposed to having the quarter, three quarter, half dollar, uh, tick values there. Okay. The other settings that I do modify on the DOM here will be the bid column, ask profile column, bid and ask snapshot, the LTQ column, and I leave everything else. I do like to have the alert column because I do pay attention to where the NQ opens. So when the market opens, there will be in this column here it'll refer to where the opening price was. And I like to always have that in visual because it's very important where the NQ opens and closes in respects to where we're trading when trying to spot a divergence between the ES and the NQ. Okay, very key here, once you have your workstation set up, you will need to make sure you save it. So you'll go to the same tab, File. This will say Workspace. I labeled mine Stream Workspace. And what you do is you click Save. And that will ensure that the, in the how you have everything laid out will stay saved, including the drawings you have on your footprint chart, along with the settings you changed and modified on the NQ and ES DOMs. Because if you don't do this, you will lose your settings and you'll have to consistently, every time you reopen Jigsaw, reopen, reopen and modify all of your settings. Now the final step is you can connect this platform with any prop firm you trade with. So that's with that's top step, London Futures Trader, Apex. I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to do so, whether it's Rhythmic Data, CQJ Data, they're very similar. But for this example, we're going to be using Rhythmic Data Feed. But there is one additional step that includes in Rhythmic Data Feed, and that includes logging into your R Trader, Rhythmic Trader Pro app. Once you're logged in, then you can continue to the Connections tab, which is this logo here on the left. You'll click this. 
it'll open up a window here, at which point, if you were to set up a new account, you would click on the drop down menu new. Go to rhythmic for this example. If you did CQG, you'd simply click on CQG. And once that, you'll get a pop up that looks similar to this. And on the first line, you'll want to put in the type of connection this is. In this case, this is rhythmic. Description, you might want to name it the connection that you have. In this case, we'll use Apex since that is the connection for this rhythmic issue. And the username that's provided to you at either TopStep or any other account you use. In this case, this is for um, Apex. So I'll put in Apex. The password that you use to log in, Apex provides you with one. TopStep, you create your own. So you'll claim whatever password that is. The server here will be varying depending on who you use. If you use Apex, you'll click Apex. And it'll provide you the logins for that. If you do uh, top step, you just click T, top step combine, and you'll click on that. 20 days, uh, days to load on startup, you can leave that as is. What I like to do is I want to have auto connect set up and then log in via R Trader if you are logging in through a rhythmic data feed. CQG will not have the settings, you'll just need to toggle the auto connect. Once you click OK, you'll create a new account here. I already have mine logged in, but essentially what you would do is you highlight over it. Click connect, make sure your rhythmic data feed is connected through R Trader Pro. And then at some point, give it a second or two, you'll load and it'll connect you directly to your CQG or your rhythmic data. It just takes a minute to connect at times, sometimes it's immediate. If you want to see this platform be used in real time, you can join me live. I stream Monday through Friday as I walk you through how I interpret all the data coming through from these features to give you a better understanding of what it is you're purchasing. In this invest as this is an investment for your trading career. The price of this platform is $579. If you use my affiliate link, you and I will get $30 credited towards your purchase. And there's also a $50 subscription plan you will need to use in order to uh, use the service at any time, and you're free to cancel at any point. We do also offer a 14-day free trial, at which point you can issue for a full refund in the event that you did not find any value in using the software.